Hi there and welcome here to Seismic Radio, to um, BBN Radio as well. Uh, it's just the carry-on of, um, or continuation of what I uh, used to do before, which is uh, to just go through the book of Proverbs and to, to go through um, the things which are written in the book of Proverbs. It's, it's a very deep book and I would recommend to anybody to spend some time um, with the book of Proverbs, you know, read a couple of verses and, um, you know, take it to life. It's in the Old Testament. It's just uh, in um, just after the Book of Psalms. So it's pretty much the middle. If you take the Bible and you open it up in the middle, um, <clears throat> you uh, you get uh, the Book of Psalms most likely, and then just the next book up is uh, Proverbs, followed by Ecclesiastes, which is very similar to Proverbs, but uh, a very very deep book, and it's sort of not just a collection of uh, wisdom or of verses or of poetry. But uh, Ecclesiastes looks at the whole theme of life, what life is all about, and, and how to, how to um, interpret life, how to deal with life. Uh, so very, very impressive. And it's maybe the next one to, to go through. Okay, let's uh, start, uh, make a start in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 1. Um, Sons, hear the instruction of a father and listen in order to know understanding for I give you good teaching do not forsake my law for I was my father's son tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother he also taught me and said to me let your heart hold fast to my words and keep my commandments and live okay right uh, when we look at wisdom wisdom <clears throat> is very often referred to in the female form um, when I look at this uh, section of the scripture here it reminds me of uh, King David and Solomon. Solomon, renowned to be the wisest, wisest king that has ever been, uh, probably other than Jesus Christ himself. Um, but um, it, it is important. Yeah. So it may be a guideline for us as well. So one thing, and, and I'm sort of in the last third of my life, one thing I know for sure, and that is that, um, uh, that my understanding is more and a lot more than what it was 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago. When I was in my 20s, I came out of adolescence and, and I thought, uh, maybe just a little bit of advice to you as well if you're a teenager, but I thought I had it all sorted. I, I knew, I knew the systems work. I'd been a Christian at that time for, like in my 20s, I became a Christian when I was 16. So um, I had the benefit of um, biblical understanding, biblical knowledge, as well as what I've seen around me, as well as what, I, what I've learned in my normal upbringing. And I thought I knew it all. Today, I look back and I, I know I knew nothing, really. Uh, I didn't have a clue. That's when I look today. I'm in my 50s now. So I look back at myself in my 20s and I thought I wished I could talk to myself in my 20s. You know? And, and uh, I haven't got children, but... Again, if I had a son, um, maybe easier a son than a daughter, because obviously I was a boy myself, I, I could infer and uh, advise a lot better and give a, a, you know, better guidance, far better guidance than I could have done, let's say, 10, 20 or 30 years ago. Um, and so, I mean, if you are a young man or a young woman, I would, I would highly recommend to you to, to listen to your parents. You don't have to accept anything they say. Also, you've got the Bible, you've got the Word of God, and um, and the highest standard in your life should be the Bible, the Word of God. Um, you know, taking the Bible and, and reading it and uh, trying to gain an understanding in the fear of God and in, in praying about it. Uh, just to make the point, I mean, stuff I learned when I was young, um, which I thought was right and which I thought was a correct understanding of the Bible, sort of as I grew in life and, and hopefully maturity as well, uh, I could see that a lot of things aren't really quite as straight-laced and straight-cut as what I thought they were when I was, again, a young man in my 20s. But, um, but that you, you learn to differentiate a bit more and you learn to, to look at issues from not just one side but from, from different sides as well. Also, you understand God a little bit better because you've been through life, you've been through many, you know, high, high, high roads and low roads, and the shepherd has always been with you and he's been ahead of you, and you understand the shepherd a little bit more. I don't profess to say I understand God, I don't. 
Yeah, but I understand him better than what I did 20 years ago. 20 years ago, everything was pretty much, or 30 years ago, when I was in my 20s, everything was pretty much in, in black and white. Today, I realize it's not quite as, as straightforward and simple as that. But on the other side, um, in relying on God and in relying on um, the advice I can retrieve from the Bible and I can, you know, through the Holy Spirit, obtain from the Almighty is is better than anything, even if it goes against my my understanding and my common sense and my interpretation of things. Yeah. Uh, that's a lesson I've learned that God is always right. Yeah. Even if I think I know better, uh, it doesn't matter. He's right. Uh, sometimes it's a problem on our end that we don't understand what God wants for our life or we misinterpret things. And I see this a lot when I, when I listen to testimonies and people have got an experience with God and they draw conclusions where I'm very doubtful that they are the right conclusions, but based on their experience with God, they are adamant that this is the right interpretation or the right conclusion. Not necessarily. I mean, if I look at the Bible, it is um, it is somewhat different. Again, let's go back to the text here. Um, for I give you good teaching and do not forsake my law. So um, <clears throat> this is not necessarily a father. It's probably, it's poetry, Hebrew poetry. And this is the way to understand it as well, where it's there. So, uh, if your father loves you, your heavenly father certainly does. Your natural father may love you, may not love you. Uh, your heavenly father is perfect. Your earthly father may have wisdom, which is good and great. He may be a fool yeah, from, from a biblical perspective. I don't know. But, but certainly what we should do is, um, and this is what it says, it's, and we should put this word in capital letter, letters, sons, hear the instruction of a father and listen in order to know understanding. Uh, could you pick up on it? Listen. Listen is very, very important. I think very often people, and, and this is not just young people, young men, young women, uh, old men, old, uh, could, could be anybody, but people have forgotten the skill of listening. And if you listen and you open your eyes, you open your ears and you listen, you will begin to understand. You will begin to understand good things and bad things. You will begin to understand things that lead to good stuff and things that lead to bad stuff. You will understand. Uh, and if I, I go through this presentation, hopefully I get it all done within, within the hour. But uh, if, if nothing else comes out of it, uh, I want you to... To maybe uh, on a piece of paper, with a with a you know big felt pen or something, just just write on on it the word listen, and put it on the wall and keep it there for for four weeks. Just learn to listen. Just come to a point where you are quiet within yourself, where you can respond to God, where you can respond to the words God has got to tell you through through the Holy Spirit. But you need to come to a place of, of inner peace and inner, inner quietness, inner solace, of uh, an attitude of prayer and uh, an attitude of, of just, uh, just opening up to God. That's, that's one way of listening. But then also in your interaction with other people, uh, we often, we, we, you know, we, we rush through life, we, uh, we bulge through it and we, we never listen. We don't listen to the turmoil people are in. We don't listen to, uh, to uh, you know, what people really have to say. We don't read between the lines. We maybe listen sometimes to the wrong things, uh, sort of the human interest stuff, the gossip and, and other stuff, you know, where uh, where it's not really important to listen. But but if you even if you listen to gossip, maybe you just listen behind the scenes. You you pick up on the turmoil that is going on in somebody else's life and. You take the time out to to pray for those people that are gossiped about, and and if you listen very carefully, you will learn to discern the truth and the lie, the deception and uh, and 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 the clarity of of a situation or of somebody's life. So, it's important to listen, and I think we should train people to listen. I um. Uh, when I was younger, I was sort of very much interested in sort of oriental oriental uh, storytelling. So it was a bit like the television of the antiquity, where you sat down at a fire and um, and you had this. Interestingly, you had this in Europe, you know, at the king's court. You had uh, the the so-called minnesänger, 
So there were people um, who would go around from town to town and they would just spread news and in, they would put, him, put the news in verse and in song. And uh, um, so th that was one way. And in, in, the, in the Arab culture or in the Middle Eastern culture, you had uh, people who sat down at night by fire, you know, somewhere in the desert to keep warm. You know, deserts get cold at night. And, um, and they would just talk fairy tales and every tribe had, had its own fairy tales and they would, you know, come up in different variations and change through the generations. But people were taught to listen, to listen and every fairy tale, every story, it wasn't necessarily a fairy tale, it was, may have been a story that, that really happened, you know, it was maybe slightly embellished, but there was always a moral, there was always something to, to take to heart, something to learn. And... Um, and and people were being brought up to listen. Okay, let me let, let me go a little bit into the Jewish culture. And the Jewish culture, it's the same thing, but they go one step further. Uh, Jewish kids are learned to ask, are taught to ask uh, questions. So um, you you ask questions, and every question is allowed, and then you listen, and then you you, you are entering into this dialogue. Uh, what I find today in society very often that people, they don't want to listen anymore. They want to talk. They want to, to share what's on their heart. They want to uh, present their views, but they are no longer willing to listen, to listen to the other side. Uh, I can see this in politics today. I can see this in, um, in you know, everyday interaction between people. People talk and they talk an awful lot, but they don't listen anymore. So uh, again, you know, from this talk, if, if nothing else, else comes out of it, I, want, I would like you to, to just try and to train yourself to listen. To listen, first of all, to God, to listen to other people, to listen to what is going on in this world, um, and, um, and to, to seek God's guidance in all of the things you are listening to, and to take them to heart, and to learn and to increase your knowledge. And also to, to intervene, and you can intervene by prayer. You can change this world by prayer. I mean, this world at the moment is very crazy. We are on the brink of a, of a nuclear war, of a full-blown war. We've got trouble in, in Iran, in Jordan, in, at the time when, when, this is, uh, when I'm talking about this. So when is it? Just in case you listen to it later, it's February 2024. There's trouble in... In the Ukraine, there's trouble in Russia. Um, there are problems all over the world. And, um, and the point I'm trying to make is if you listen and you pick up on what is going on, you can pray into situations because we know that we are not fighting against flesh and blood as Christians, but we are fighting against the principalities of the kings and the, the rulers of the air. So in other words, of the, uh, the in unseen kingdom, um, who direct men's heart to go to war and to be destructive, to murder, to kill, to deceive. But we can pray into this and we can pray against it and we can weaken, weaken the bastions of power that are there in the, in the air, the rulers of the air, in the unseen world, so that peace will return, that people will open up, open up their hearts to the true God and that they will pursue peace rather than war. It's a crazy world we are, we are in, so I think it's important to, to listen, to digest, to bring it before God, yeah, to be guided by God, and, and also to take action, to pray about it, and to pray into situations, to you know, come before God and, and just ask Him to bring resolution to whatever is going on. Okay, let's go back to the text here. It's Proverbs chapter 4, in case you have forgotten. For I give you good teaching, do not forsake my law. Okay. For I was my father's son, tender, and the only beloved in the sight of my mother. That points to Solomon. Yeah. He also taught me and said to me, Let your heart hold fast to my words and keep my commandments and live. Okay. These are, I assume it's David and Solomon uh, that's been talked about here. Uh, but also there, there's a deeper wisdom in there. If you keep to God's commandments, you will live and you will uh, extend your life. If you abandon God, 
you end up in turmoil and in trouble and maybe shorten your life. Get wisdom, get understanding. That's verse 4. Get wisdom, get understanding. Forget not, nor turn away from the words of my mouth. Do not forsake her, and she shall preserve you. So now he's talking about wisdom, or the text is talking about wisdom, and it's in the female form. Greek Sophia, that's what the word for wisdom is. And she shall preserve you. Wisdom will preserve you. Love her, and she shall keep you. Wisdom is the main thing. Get wisdom and with all your uh, and with all your getting get understanding. Yeah, okay, it's interesting. Let's let's have a look at this phrase here. Oh, I'm just trying to get my mouse. I don't know whether I can highlight stuff. So thank you. Shall preserve you. Okay. So you should not forsake her. Yeah. So this is wisdom. Yeah, just just hang on to her. Love her, she shall keep you. Wisdom is the main thing, get wisdom. And with all you're getting, let's kind of highlight this. Yeah, I can highlight this. With all you're getting, what what does it mean? It's sort of old English. It's a modern King James version I'm reading from. I think it came out sometime in the fifties. With all you're getting, so we get a lot of stuff. Yeah, and it's normal in life. You get your place to live. You get uh, some mode of transport. You um, you get tools and nice toys. If you're a woman, you get nice dresses. You get uh, jewelry and. A nice kitchen and, and maybe other things which which enhance your life and, and there's always this ambition which is normal as long as it doesn't you know take us over and controls us there's a desire of 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 obtaining the next thing in your life and aspiring to the next bit and, and it might be um i don't know if you are poor it might be a bicycle if you are rich it might be a mercedes or something um that this getting stuff is, is with us and is always always there. But he says here, with all you're getting, get understanding. That's more important. Get understanding and uh, wisdom. And it, it makes sense on, on many on many areas. If you've got understanding, uh, I mean, it'll sort all the other areas of your life as well. You will know how to sustain yourself, support yourself. You will make better decisions in your life and you may be able to improve your life as well. Yeah. Um, there's a scripture in Ecclesiastes, the race is not to the swift nor the battle to the strong, nor favor to the learned, but time and chance happen to them all. We all get chances, we all get, get opportunities and if you've got understanding you will recognize the times. And you will recognize when an opportunity comes along and you will take hold of it. And it'll, it'll be to your benefit. It'll be better. Prize her and she shall lift you up. She shall bring you to honor when you embrace her. She shall give you a hand and ornament of grace. She shall shield you with the crown of glory. Okay, that's in verse 9. That's where we are now in Proverbs chapter 4. Hear, O my son, and receive my sayings, and the years of your life shall be many. I have taught you in the way of wisdom, and I have led you in the right path. When you go, your steps shall not be narrowed, and when you run, you shall not stumble. Take fast hold of instruction, do not let go, keep her, for she is your life. And are not into the path of the wicked, and do not go into the way of evil. Okay. Right, so let me go all the way up to verse 13. So that's what I'm just going to highlight this here. So if you listen to a podcast, obviously you can't hear that I'm highlighting stuff, but you um, can just imagine it. Um, so it just talks about wisdom, how important it is, you know, that we should not let go of it. We should run to it. And, and if, we, if we have and if we embrace wisdom, um, we will not stumble uh, when we run. And our steps shall not be narrowed. We will be in the right path. And that is very, very important yeah, for wisdom. Um, again, life is where we are living on enemy territory. Yeah. That's, that's one thing you have to, sort of as a Christian, you have to understand. We are not living in paradise. When you come to Christ, uh, even though God will help you through problems, will help you through a crisis or many crises, hope I pronounce this right, and... Uh, and, and life will be better. There's no question about it. Yeah. Even if you are persecuted, even if you are in the, you know, financially or on the outside, from the people outside looking in, in the dumps, life will be better. Even if you're in a prison cell, 
if you've got Jesus in your life, if you've got God in your life, you've got a peace that surpasses all understanding. Yeah. And you can you can get through it and you can even from you know from a prison cell, be it a real one or be it a, um, a figurative one, um, you can shake the world and you can change the world through you reaching out to God, through you praying, through you interacting with God. And don't underestimate this. It doesn't matter who you are, even if you are, in your own opinion, the lowest person on this planet. For whatever reason, uh, you know, zero achievement, you know, from the world's perspective, you can be the one that, that changes the world. You can be the very one that can stop wars and uh, rescue people and, uh, you know, change fortunes of many people. And don't underestimate this because God will listen and God will listen to you, especially if you are um, in this predicament. So uh, always, always remember this. Don't, don't ever set yourself short in, in any way whatsoever. You can be a world changer and you don't need to be the president for that. You can be the lowest person of, of them all and you can change the world for the better. And um, we've got like amazing stories in the Bible. I mean, I have to think about Joseph, who, um, you know, uh, a guy who I wouldn't say had a lot of wisdom to start off with, but God was with him. You know, he, he, um, he was a boaster and he boasted in front of his brothers, you know, that he would rule all over them and uh, even over his parents and stuff like that, that he had all these wonderful dreams. And, it, and they were just infuriated and they wanted to kill him or set him off as a slave because they were just fed up with this, um, with this boy. Anyway, he ended up in Egypt. Um, <clears throat> uh, wherever he was, you know, things went really, really well. He became a slave of, uh, uh, you know, in a good household. And, um, and he was sort of the second next to the master after some time. And uh, this master's wife wanted to sleep with him. He refused and she accused him of, um, you know, molesting her. And he ended up in prison. And in prison, you know, he did well and, and everything went really well. Um, and eventually, um, you know, he interpreted dreams. That was sort of his speciality. And some people had a dream and he interpreted it for them and everything happened the way, you know, he said it. And then uh, years later, the, the pharaoh in Egypt, where he, he was in prison, you know, turned slave, turned prisoner. Uh, and bear this in mind, this is from the world's perspective, you know, what's going on here. And, and maybe it was something which he needed to, to uh, you know, shape his character and turn humility and he went from the favorite son to the despised slave from the favorite slave in the household you know running the all, all the affairs to uh, a prisoner then he went to you know a liked and beloved prisoner and then eventually pharaoh had a dream and he needed somebody to interpret the dream and he interpreted the dream uh, pharaoh put joseph in charge and he became the second uh, the right hand man of the the pharaoh in in egypt and um, and eventually his family came and they bowed down to him, not recognizing that he was Joseph, that he was the one they sold as slave. And um, and so his dream came true, but it took a long time for him, probably some shaping of character to deal with the uh, eminence he would uh, later achieve and uh, and be there. But, uh, but he held fast to his righteousness. He wasn't compromised. And he suffered for his righteousness. And, and the same may happen to you if you work somewhere and you don't go along with corruption that is, uh, that is, you know, sometimes happening within companies. And because you don't go along, you get sucked or you get demoted or, or whatever. You get disadvantaged. Don't, don't worry about it because eventually the time will come when, when God will justify you and when, when God will make you stand and elevate you. Okay, um, right, let's go to the next one. Um, do not enter into the path of the wicked, that's verse 14, and do not go into the way of evil. Avoid it, do not pass by it, turn from it and pass on. For they do not sleep except when they have done mischief, and their sleep is taken away unless they cause some to fall. For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. But the path of the just is uh, the shining light that shines more and more, to the perfect day. Okay, so the wicked. We've got 
a problem with the wicked. Yeah? And probably a lot of people fall into this category. Yeah? And, and as I said, like as you go through life, you realize that um, it's, life is not as straightforward. It's not black and white. And very easy to get lured into doing stuff that is corrupt or that's not right. Um, and we should resist going down or being sucked into this path. And it's it's not like, you know, the main thing, you know, mafia style sort of corruption, but it's it starts very little that you do a little bit here, a little bit there, and um, and it sort of drags you down into a path. We need to resist it as Christians. Um, and we, we, we shouldn't path, enter into the path of the wicked, not into the way of evil. Avoid it, yeah. So that's what it says, avoid it. Interesting as well, the, the words which are used here. Do not pass by it, turn from it and pass on. Yeah. So really, when, when this opportunity presents to us to do evil, to do wicked, to get a lot of money with, uh, with that, we should avoid it and pass on. For they do not sleep except when they have done mischief and their sleep is taken away unless they cause some to fall. So wicked people have got sleepless nights, yeah. and uh, you know whatever they have done will catch up with them. And it's it's true because people who turn to violence, very often they are exposed to revenge, um, and they um, they are worried. They are worried that they, you know, that their deeds catch up with them. Righteous people don't. Yeah. Righteous people don't get worried. Uh, they eat the bread. Um, of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. Yeah. So it's, it's like the daily diet. Yeah, that's what they do. And that's what they think about. And and there's lots of this stuff going on in this world. And and there's like illegal wickedness, yeah, where you exploit other people, put other people into slavery. And you do this legally by, by not breaking any law whatsoever. But ethically, it's just totally wrong. Yeah. You know, exploitation and things like that not giving people a fair wage and, and things like that. But it's happening all the time and it's 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 legalized in, in our society. And again, if you're in a position of power, if you are in a position of, you know, controlling other people, giving jobs to other people, um, I would just like to, you know, to recommend to you to treat your employees, treat those who work for you, treat those who generate the wealth you're enjoying fairly, Give them a fair pay, a fair wage. Um, treat them with with goodness and kindness, and uh, and and again, I mean, I come back to the point of prayer. You know, you are maybe a small king in the world of kings, yeah, like a small ruler, where you rule over people who work for you, and uh, and and just give them, and give them what they've earned, yeah? and uh, and be fair, righteous, and good, and uh, bearing in mind that. You know, you are serving God as well. Uh, but the path of the just is sh the shining light that shines more and more to the perfect day. The day of the, the way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. Okay. And it's, it's just like a mentality, uh, you know, when you've got the way of the wicked. Um. And it, you know, they fall and they, they don't know what's what's hitting them and why they're falling. And it's it's interesting as well when you when you um, you know talk to people who have been through a life of crime. And um, um, and and fortunately, there's always a way back. And and I'm I met quite a few people who have uh, pretty much lived a life of crime, and then some became Christians and they turned their life around. Uh, I met once a bank robber. And. Uh, um, it was interesting, sort of, when you listen to their story, you know, he, he later became a preacher, a minister of the gospel. Uh, he was, he was quite a character, but uh, it worked, um, it worked really well uh, in his life. So he turned it around and I think he's died quite a few years ago, 20, 30 years ago, I think. But I, I had the privilege of meeting him and, and spending a day at his uh, place as well. He accommodated me and uh, he's quite an, quite an amazing guy. Um, my son, listen to my words and bow down to your ear to my sayings. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to all his flesh. Um, keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. 
Okay, let's go through these verses here. Um, Proverbs uh, chapter 4, verse 20. My son, listen to my words, bow down your ear to my sayings. Okay, we had this before. Very, very important. And I, I would encourage you as well, you know, read Proverbs, read Ecclesiastes if you've never spent time in there. And I mean, obviously, Don, it's it's um, it's like I'm talking about this text for uh, I don't know how long, but quite quite some time now. Uh, you need to digest them. You need to uh, maybe just a couple of verses a day and and just um, stick them on a wall, you know, memorize them or whatever. And, and some verses I'm sure will speak to you more than others. Um, just um, just um, you know, take them to heart. Really take them to heart. Um, let them not depart from your eyes, keep them in the midst of your heart. Okay, so that's those sayings. So this is Proverbs, yeah. That, that's what you should do. Um, for they are life to those who find them and health to all his flesh. Okay. Again, the beginning of wisdom is the fear of God. Um, we've had this verse before in Proverbs, and, and that is really the key to, to all of this, you know, is to arrange your life. Um, you know, in relationship with God. Uh, you know, when you do things, when you make decisions, when you when you go somewhere, think about what does God want you to do? Uh, what is the way of God in your life? Um, is this the right way? Is this the wrong way? And, and so on. So, so these are all decisions, but you should bring them before God and, and He will straighten up your way. He will make it right. I mean, I this is, again, it's life experience. I've in my life, I've made a lot of decisions. I've made decisions which are, uh, you know, life changing, like career path and so on. And and my mentality has always been sort of, you know, if the door is open, I go through it. If it's closed, it's closed. And, and very often, I didn't even try the closed doors to see whether the handle was open, to use this figurative speech. But um, I was sort of uh, sliding through life. But sometimes I did make decisions, and sometimes those decisions were wrong. And um, I mean, I, I now I'm aware of it that God is outside of time. He knows the wrong decisions I take, and you know all the plans I place to to sort of try and correct me. But with hindsight, I can see that decision A, B, and C was not right, yeah? and it it did cost me. Um, I wouldn't say dearly, but it did cost me. You know, I, you know, God, God wants to get you somewhere, and He's going to get you where He wants you to be, yeah? one way or the other. Um, and and obviously, if you step back. And, and it's, it's it's harder when you are young because you're just right into it and you want to go for it. But when you are older, it's it's sometimes a bit easier to just step back and and really ask yourself: Is this is this is what is this what God wants me to do, or is it is it something else? Yeah. And you you wait and you look for an answer from from the Lord. Then it does make um, a little bit more sense. And very often the things which are perfectly logic and perfectly normal to us and which we think, yeah, this is the right way. Um, that's that's what we should do and that's what we go. But in the end, it turns out it is not. You know, God has got a completely different plan for you. He doesn't want you to go this way. He doesn't want you to, you know, take this route or another route. He wants you to, um, to go a different way. And, um, and again, this is something which we should bear in mind. Okay, so... Um, next verse, 21, 421, let them not depart from your eyes, keep them in the midst of your heart. So this is, you know, the sayings of wisdom. For they allow life to those who find them and health to all his flesh. Okay, good. Keep your heart with all diligence and, f and for, for all of it are the issues of life. Okay, there's another scripture and I don't know where it is, but it says, um, you, could, you would have to look it up on a concordance, it says that the heart is deceitful above all things. And, um, and you have to bear this in mind sort of within the context. So I know that my heart is deceitful. So my heart, you know, wants a thing and um, I've got desires, longings and, and things like that, but they're not necessarily the right desires, not necessarily the right longings. It's deceitful. It's, it's just sort of emotionally swept along. Um, and it says here, keep your heart with all diligence and, and the way I understand it with this context is that uh, you should, you know, keep your heart under check. Yeah? And I'm talking about not obviously the uh, the pump, uh, which pumps blood around, you know, keep it as well. It's important. But I'm talking about the, uh, the spiritual heart, the spiritual side of it. Uh, you need to keep it under check with all diligence. Yeah? And again, you know, you get desires, you get longings, you get 
um, you know, ideas which are born from within your heart, but they're not necessarily good or right. They can be good or right, but they're not. But you need to keep your heart. You need to keep this under control, keep it under check um, with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. And, and this is very true. I mean, this is, I mean, if you're a young man or a young woman, uh, it's your partner, the choice of your partner, and your heart goes all over the place. But, uh, and sometimes your parents, uh, uh, will tell you, oh no, this is not the right partner, not for you, it's never going to work, you're going to struggle, and, and, and so on. And maybe there's some wisdom to it, and maybe they are right. Yeah. Or then on the other side, uh, you um, um, you want to go a certain way, you know, embark on a certain career, and, and things like that. And it all seems perfectly right, perfectly good, and you know, you think this is the path, this is what it is. But it's not necessarily from God, and it's not necessarily what, what you will enjoy. I mean, one thing I've learned is that, that the stuff I enjoy, if you make it into a profession, the enjoyment stops pretty pretty quickly. And, uh, and you need to, you know, obviously um, go in a way that is good and that is right. And, and um, God knows best, you know, and, and, and we always think, no, 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 we know pretty, pretty well as well, and God gives me the freedom to decide, and he does give you the freedom to decide but if you come to him and you ask him for guidance uh, in those choices you will find that even though they override your heart or your heart tries to take you a completely different direction uh, you will find you know with hindsight which is always better that God's choice was better than uh, your heart's choice all the issues of life coming out of it yeah so you know the stuff you do the stuff you endeavor to do the way you walk the people you deal with um you know the stuff that inspires you the stuff you surround yourself with and so on put away from you a wicked mouth and devious lips far from you okay right what is a wicked mouth uh, it's not just swear words and foul language even though this certainly comes into it but it's, it's other things as well a wicked mouth is um is saying stuff that's not true because you try to get an advantage from it. Lying is not good, obviously. Um, you know, putting yourself up and others down. Yeah. In the same way of putting others up and putting yourself down beyond measure. Uh, that's the other extreme. Both things are not good. Yeah. Saying too much, sometimes saying too little is a problem. Um, so wicked mouth, don't don't have this. Just just try to train. You know, if you talk about people, be positive. If you or at least be objective, that's the minimum. Yeah, don't don't down them for no reason whatsoever. If you um, don't spread rumors, don't spread lies. If you're not sure whether it's factual, you know whatever you heard, don't don't share it or make clear that you don't know. A devious lips put put far from you. So deviousness is where you say things in order to obtain something. I, I tell you a little story. I had a, a friend of mine I hadn't seen for many years, and um, it, it was a couple, and um, um, and it was interesting. Sort of when I when I spoke to them, and I hadn't spoken to them for a long time. A lot of it was just flattery, and and you know, oh, you're such a wonderful guy, and all the rest of it. And it all came down to manipulation. They wanted something and they tried to manipulate you to to do, for me, to do what they wanted me to do. Um, it, it takes you some time to try and figure this out and to see what is going on. But but when you sit back and you think about it, you knew straight away that, okay, this is what, what this was about. And and the problem is it, it leaves a, a very bitter taste once you realize that, that they tried to play you they succeeded a little bit, but then you kind of realize what is going on here, and you think, this is not right, whatever is going on here. And um, and it was just pure manipulation. It was deviousness. Uh, they tried to uh, to modify my, my actions, my behavior, my decisions, based on what they wanted to do and what they wanted to get out of me. Uh, the sad thing is they, they claim to be Christians, and um, it just shows you that, that and I know the church where they were going to, and, and the you know the at the top level it was run like a cult, and they pretty much did this all the time. They tried to manipulate people into doing things which 
they felt they wanted to do. Yeah. It was a bit like building a small empire, um, church empire, and obviously letting people part with a lot of money and so on. So it was kind of a little bit of an eye-opener. It was disappointing as well because I, I was dealing with friends. I wasn't dealing with people, uh, you know, friends I had helped and they had helped me and, and, and things like that. So there was some sort of relationship there. And the sad thing is it just ended in um, in, in turmoil, yeah. unnecessarily. So that's devious lips. Just put them away from you. If you want something, just be straight. If you uh, have plans, be straight. Don't try and manipulate people, you know, on the back row or anything like that. Just be straight, be open, be honest to the best of your ability. It's, it's sometimes very difficult and sometimes it's not wise to give too much information either, but you don't have to be dishonest about it either. Um, okay, next verse. Look, let your eyes look right on and let your eyelids look straight before you. Okay, so um, yeah, straight look on, straight before you, don't look to the side, don't wink, <laughs> things like that. Ponder the path of your feet and all your ways will be established. Okay, very, very important. This one is very important. So ponder the path of your feet and the ways will be established. Now, obviously, in a liter literal sense, you walk somewhere and uh, like through a forest or whatever, and you think about where do I walk? And you do this, you know, automatically, you know, do I walk, you know, on the, 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 the trodden path or if it's, you know, too muddy and I you know, step on the grass next to it to stop me from slipping or something like that. That's what you do naturally when you walk somewhere on a path and your way, ways will be established so you will have a firm footing. That's what it says in, in a liter literal sense. In a figurative sense, um, you know, where do you go? Where am I going? And it might be worthwhile to ask yourself, maybe every morning when you get up out of bed, you know, what am I doing today? Where am I going? Where am I going spiritually? Um, I mean, I've got some big questions in my life, yeah. big, big questions. I don't know what the answer is. I don't know which way to go, you know, whether to go this way or the other way. And I pray about it. And um, the answer God impresses on me every morning or every day is, is basically seek my face. Yeah. Seek God's face, not, not mine, Michael's face, but Jesus's face. face. Seek him, seek God. Yeah. Don't worry about this thing. Don't worry about tomorrow. Worry about today. Each day has got his own plague. Each day has got his own troubles. You know, seek God today, not think about tomorrow. But but nevertheless, it's good to ponder your path. You know, what am I doing? I've got a couple of big decisions which are ahead of me. And I sort of tend to go one way, then I tend to go the other way a little bit. But uh, uh, in a couple of days, I have to make this decision. And I was sort of hoping for... Um, you know, suddenly this enlightenment where God says, right, this is the way, walk in it. And, and maybe it will come, maybe it will come in the last minute. And if it doesn't come, I will have to make a decision either way. Yeah. So it, it's like you walk in your life and you've got this this fork. Yeah. You can go to the right, to the left. Uh, you will have to go somewhere. Yeah. You can't just stop there at this point, but you have to go right or left. And, um, and obviously I want to, to, to go the right way. And, and whatever, whichever way I choose is going to impact my, my future, impact other people's lives as well. Um, and um, so I have to, I have to make a decision. And it's not going to be taken away from me. Okay, that, that's me, but the same with you as well. Ponder your way. Uh, ponder the path of your feet. Ponder which way you are walking. And, um, in, and all your ways will be established. You know, don't just walk, you know, eyes up in the air and, uh, you know, look at the birds of the sky and uh, the trees and stuff like that and you don't know where you're treading and eventually you slip and you might fall down and your path is not established but uh, look at you know what's happening which way are you going uh, uh, again we're coming back to the same thing pray about it seek god about it i mean the the impression i had for my life was just to to seek the face of the lord to um to walk in the right way and to make the right decisions Okay, and then it says here, oops, something fell down here. Oh, okay, uh, not sure whether you could hear this. Last verse, and this is verse 20, 27. Uh, Do not turn to the right hand, nor to the left. Remove your foot from evil. So basically, um, 
Look towards righteousness, look towards God, look towards what is right. Um, do not turn to the right hand nor to the left. Remove your foot from evil. Don't do evil. And, and the thing is, the reality is we're living in a world which is uh, full of evil. Yeah. And, um, and whenever you deal with people, you're going to get sucked into it. This, this might be, you know, bad-mouthing other people or, uh, you know, having bad notions, corruption, deception. Um, it's all around us and we, we just don't, don't get away from it, you know. Until we are in heaven, we, we'll be exposed to this because the ruler of this world, the prince of this world, as Jesus calls him, is, as the Bible calls him, is the devil. Yeah. Uh, we have escaped this world as Christians and we have entered the kingdom of God, but we are, how shall I say, not inside of the kingdom of God, but we are, you know, like uh, foreigners on this planet. We don't belong here. We belong somewhere else, but, uh, but we are here. And, uh, and we shouldn't turn to the right nor to the left, and we should remove our foot from evil, just straight forward ahead towards righteousness, towards, towards what God wants us to do, doing the right thing. And it's easy to be sidetracked, and, and don't get me wrong. Um, that this is the last verse. Um, I had a thought, I've forgotten it, which I thought was quite good, fitting into this. Um, let me just go up and then I'll close this talk, upload it to YouTube. Um, this is about wisdom, about wisdom. So um, it's, it's very important. Embrace it. Embrace wisdom and understanding. It's the biggest treasure you can have in your life. It's more important than gold, more important than silver or lots of money, dollars, euros, pounds, whatever, whatever it may be. Uh, much more important, you can have all the money in the world, but you can be the biggest fool and lose it all in a day. You can have all the money in the world, and yet um, it is fascinating as well. I, I had to think about um, millionaires, uh, lottery millionaires, and a lot of people, they, uh, they won the lottery, and they, they had more money than they could ever imagine to ever get in their lives. And um, and I saw a documentary, and a lot of them. I wouldn't say maybe all of them, but a lot of them. They weren't. They weren't happy. There was just this initial thing, you know. I, they don't have to work anymore. They don't have to, uh, you know, worry about monetary issues, you know, like mortgage payments or anything like that. Everything was sorted. Everything was was okay. But it it very often it, it destroyed their lives. People just couldn't deal with it, with the sudden riches they had, and some of them were bankrupt within a very short time they started spending money and i mean literally i mean if you've got like um, um maybe a million pounds in your bank account maybe today it needs to be a bit more two or three million um and you you sort of think you know the average worker in the uk is maybe about 25k a year so in 10 years will be 250,000. in um in uh, 40 years will be about a million. Yeah? So if you're in your 40s and you get a million, so theoretically, and if, you, if you're wise and clever, um, and um, you, you know, you don't need to work anymore, and you've got like a, you know, your a good wage coming coming out for the next 40 years. If you invest some of the money, um, which again investments are here and there, but uh, you will be okay. But what's happening very often is that people suddenly start spending like crazy. <clears throat> and the the money just dwindles down, and eventually, there's nothing left, and um, and they've had the opportunity of a lifetime to you know sit back, relax, and enjoy, and they've blown it all within one or two years, yeah, because of uh, opulence and, and things like that. And again, wisdom will stop you from doing this. Understanding will stop you from doing this. So wisdom is very very important because it'll stop you from making big mistakes in your life which will ultimately destructive be destructive and you can apply this to many things in your life as well you can apply this to food you know alcohol consumption you know if you drink too much it's going to be destructive if you take too much medication it's going to be destructive yeah if you take too little it can kill you before your time you know things like that if you have understanding if you've got wisdom if you you know, can see through the things. If you learn to listen, and maybe I should close on this this bit as well, just to listen, find out what's going on, what's what's going on around you. You know, listen to your partner, listen to your children, listen to your parents. 
just listen and understand, you know, have a little bit of empathy and try to put yourself into the shoes of other people and try to see the world and the life from their perspective. And with that, you can sometimes relate a lot better to those people. And again, it's something, something, I mean, I, I'm talking to you and I, you now whilst I'm thinking about this, I, I know I try to do this and maybe when I was younger, I had a bit more empathy. As you get older, you get a bit more grumpy and you, um, you've heard it all, seen it all and so on. And, and maybe empathy is a little bit less and I need to correct myself there as well to, to try to see life from another person's perspective as well. Um, and, uh, to adjust your ways and your steps from that. Okay, I was hoping that the thought would come back, but it's not coming back. Um, Isaiah, I think it's Isaiah, it's Isaiah 30. I'm not sure. Um, it's somewhere in Isaiah, they see the scripture, the highway of holiness, you know, where a road is going to be raised and the, the saints of the Lord, the, the righteous of the Lord, the holy ones, they will walk on it. And when you come to Christ, this this highway of holiness that is being made for you, just for you. Uh, look it up in Google or Concordance or something. It's called Highway of Holiness, somewhere in Isaiah. I, I don't remember the exact verse, but it's an amazing scripture if you read through it. And, uh, and God has prepared a way for you. He's prepared a way for you. And... Um, and this is sort of the amazing route as a Christian, the, the amazing walk. I mean, Romans 8.28, that all things will work together for good, you know, for those who are loved by God and called according to his purpose. Uh, all things will work together for good in your life. And it doesn't matter what you do, which way you go, because God is so rich and so great. He can even use your mistakes. And, uh, you know, as you come to a point of repentance and turn the mistakes into something, you know, something good. Um where you can learn from, where you can gain understanding, where you can gain wisdom from, you know, even those things and, and turn them into something beautiful. Uh, okay, I'm going to close this talk. And uh, again, I'm going to highlight this one thing. Just listen, learn to listen, listen to people, listen to the Bible, listen to God, most importantly. And, um, you know, just listen, listen more than you speak. Uh, when you when you are with a group of people, just just listen to them. When people want to, you know, to throw out whatever's on their heart, listen and um, and seek wisdom. Seek wisdom. Wisdom in <coughs> in uh, First Corinthians is considered as a gift of the spirit that you can have divine wisdom. Some people can who have got this gift. They can talk wisdom into a situation, and they can lead and guide and help people with their lives. It's a bit like counselors or something today, but um, but it's just a divine perspective where some people have got this ability and have been given this gift. If you identify people like that in your church, again, listen to them. Listen and benefit from the wisdom they can give you. Uh, whatever you hear, you know, whatever decisions you are likely to make, weigh them in your heart before God and uh, commit your path unto him, unto God, and it'll go well. So that is, is very important. Okay, thank you very much for listening. God bless. This was a little talk on Proverbs chapter 4, just all on the subject of wisdom. Uh, we started off with, it's very, very important to listen to people and to listen to God, to just listen generally. And we're going to finish on this talk as well. Yeah. Don't, turn your, uh, don't turn to the right, nor to the left. But remove your foot from evil. Very, very important. Okay, God bless and bye-bye from Michael here at Cosmic Radio.